This is Surgication. Surgical education for parents. We are here to inform, inspire, connect, and heal. Surgication, Episode 2, Infantile Hemangiomas. Hi, welcome to Surgication, our surgical education for parents. Today I want to welcome Dr. Phil Gazetta. He is Professor of Surgery at Children's National Hospital. He is a mentor to everyone here at Children's. He is a wealth of knowledge. He also runs a vascular anomalous clinic. I thought that it would be very interesting for parents to learn about the various vascular anomalies that the children present with. And uh, what's interesting is even for me, who's been in surgery for a while, uh, some of the lesions that we encounter in clinics consult them to give me help with that. And I'm sure parents are out there wondering if their kids have those lesions and what to do with them. Welcome, Dr. Guzetta. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Michael. Um, what What is the, the difference between hemangioma and vascular anomalies? I know they're interchangeably used, but there's definitely a difference. And what do the parents need to know about those two entities? Okay, well, uh, vascular anomalies encompass a great number of different diagnoses, but Far and away, the most common one we do see is an infantile hemangioma. So um, infantile hemangiomas are um, very common. They're more common in girls than they are in boys. Uh, they're most common in the head and neck area, but they can, they can occur anywhere. And uh, we know that they're more common in Caucasians and in other races. What about premature babies? And in babies who are born premature, which we define as less than 36 weeks, the more premature you are, the more likely you are to have a hemangioma. And why do they occur? So we're not exactly certain why these occur, but there's also a family predilection for these. If you have a first order, order relative, like a mother or father who's had a hemangioma, you're more likely to have a hemangioma as well. So are there three phases, just to be clear? Yes, for parents, there are three, three phases, phases, correct. So the first phase is what we call the proliferative phase, and that's a period of rapid growth. And that's usually pretty much over by the time the child is three or four months of age. Then the second phase is what we call the plateau phase, in which they don't tend to get much bigger, but they don't tend to get much smaller either. Um, usually towards the end of this period, which usually lasts between six and nine months, or roughly between the age of nine months and 12 months of age, um, towards the end of that period, we start to see the color of the hemangioma change. So most hemangiomas are present on the skin, and you can see reddish to purplish discoloration. As they get towards the end of the plateau phase, frequently it gets to be less red or even get gray in the center, and that's a sign that it's starting to go into the third phase, which is the involution phase, in which the hemangiomas get smaller over a period of time. The period of time that the hemangioma is in this involution phase varies, um, but it can be as long as several years. So depending on the size and the depth of the hemangioma, it gives us a pretty good idea what it's going to look like long term. What about the congenital hemangiomas? Um, these are fully formed at birth, and they have a variable pattern. Some of them um, rapidly involute without any treatment, and we call those rapidly involuting congenital hemangiomas, or RICH. Then some do not involute, and we call those non-involuting congenital hemangiomas, NICH. And some of them partially involute, and that's called a PICH, partially involuting congenital hemangioma. But again, this is a very small percentage of the hemangiomas see, uh, that we see. How do you treat hemangiomas? Depending upon the location and the size of the hemangiomas, we may elect to treat some of these children medically. So do all the hemangiomas require surgical resection? I know this is a surgical podcast, but I know we don't really do any operations on Al that. Almost never. If the, depending upon the size and the location of the hemangioma, if they're in uh, infantile hemangiomas, if they're in an area we consider critical, like in the up, would be? upper eyebrow, um, it, that could obstruct the visual field. If they're um, on the lips, um, in which the baby couldn't feed because of uh, irritation, um, if they're very large and distorting something, uh, an area that we see them sometimes, 
is on the tip of the nose, which can um, give them quite a bulbous shape to their nose and damage the cartilage, or behind the ear if they're quite large and pushing down on the ear. Those are areas that we consider of critical location, and we treat those patients with a medication. What is the current medication? Our current medication that we prefer is a medication called propranolol. It's a beta blocker agent that's been used for many decades for patients with congenital heart disease, but it's only been used relatively recently in the last 10 to 12 years for patients with hemangiomas. So um, again, I would say probably two thirds of the patients, either the hemangiomas are small and not in critical areas and we do not treat them at all. Or if they are in critical areas, one additional area I would like to mention is sometimes um, if they're in the diaper area, um, they can become very irritated and actually uh, develop little sores on them because of the constant presence of stool and urine. And um, if the patients have irritation of that area, we treat them with uh, propranolol as well. It, there are alternate medicines. Um, primary one is a steroid, but um, unfortunately, at the age at which these children are treated, which again is less than a year of age and most of them less than six months of age, um, the steroids um, prevent the child from growing linearly. So the propranolol has a good track record. It has a low um, complication rate, although there are some complications, which is why we don't treat everybody with it. Um, but overall, yes, it's rare that we need to do an operation. What about the, um, I know laser treatment has been part of the overall treatment. Do you see success with laser treatment? Yes. So uh, laser is like beauty. It's only skin deep. <laughs> so if you have a um, residual purple area that's uh, disfiguring, then um, that can be treated with the laser, but it really doesn't do anything to the deep component. So this is a typical infantile hemangioma of the extremity. And you can see that um, the reddened area. This is a child... Um, about two months of age. So um, this was not present at all at birth and then grew, um, started growing at about a month of age. Frequently what the parents will say is, um, oh, I thought it was a little uh, scratch on the cheek. And then over the course of a month or so, it'll become quite large. You can also see in this picture, uh, sometimes there's a little whitish area around the hemangioma, what we call a halo. Um, and it just means that the, the blood vessels are being recruited to make this hemangioma. So the hemangioma is a group of small blood vessels, capillaries, and the reason that they go away when they do is because over time they get little bitty clots in them, and that's what um, causes them to shift from a bright red to a gray, and then gradually to return to the normal skin color. So um, a lesion like this, in this location, we would not treat. Um, it does not, does not need any medication. Um, depending upon the location, sometimes if they're relatively small, um, like on a cheek, um, then we will treat them with a topical agent, a form of the beta blocker called timolol. Um, but that's really dependent upon the location and the size of the lesion. So I, I was mentioning previously that um, sometimes when these go away, they do leave some, um, some residual uh, deformity. You see, this is, uh, this is a child... This child is about uh, eight months of age, and uh, you can see the hemangioma beneath the ear. Um, this is one that we would treat with uh, propranolol because of its size and because of its location and the fact that it's distorting the ear. And then uh, this is a picture taken at uh, six years of age, so about five years later. And fortunately for this child, uh, you see this is very minimal um, cosmetic abnormality. The redness that you see... Um, beneath, that's something that could be treated with laser, uh, but fortunately this child did not require any surgical intervention. When do you actually offer surgical treatment? Sometimes when they go through this progression of these three stages, proliferation, plateau, and involution, at the end of this period, and we generally consider that to be at four or five years of age, if they have a large deep component, they may be left with some residual fibro fatty tissue. That tissue tends to look like cellulite, and so if it's, if it's unsightly, depending upon where it is, and it's kind of lumpy and bumpy, then that's a patient that we would consider doing an operation for. This is another child who is, um, would be appropriately treated with, um, with propranolol. 
Um, I think you can see that uh, there's some ulceration, a sore in the middle of it. This can be very painful. And um, because of its size and its location, this is a child we would treat with uh, propranolol. Um, this child was treated, and um, over the course of a couple of years, you can see that even though the hemangioma has largely gone away, it's left a pretty unsightly uh, lesion. Um, this is that fibrofatty tissue that can be left when there's quite a deep component. And this is a child who would be um, considered a uh, candidate for treatment with a uh, surgical procedure to, um, to improve the appearance. So it's, it's unusual for us to have to operate on these patients um, in the immediate period, but long-term, some of them do require a surgical procedure. Now, what do you say to parents when they have uh, multiple hemangiomas? Do you have to worry about something, or do you tell them otherwise, you know, you see right. somebody else? Yes, that? that's a small percentage of our patients, but if the patients have four or more hemangiomas, we know that those patients are at risk for also having a hemangioma of the liver, so we routinely do an abdominal ultrasound. Fortunately, um, although that sounds like it's a serious problem, most of our patients with hemangiomas of the liver are not ill and do not require treatment. Some can become very ill, but that usually happens in the first months or so of life. So if they have a liver hemangioma and it's identified at three or four months of age, usually that's just something we watch and does not need treatment. Wonderful. And so... So those are the hemangiomas, which is the good thing about it is you don't need an operation. You just need to come and see vascular, someone in vascular anomalies who is well-known in the field, and most of them get treated with medications, and it goes away. Yes. In, that's, pretty that's, much. that's a good so news. If you, if you had to pick something wrong with your child, this is a good thing to pick. So uh, those parents who have kids with hemangiomas or other vascular anomalies, uh, this information will be helpful. And if there's any questions or concerns or any further evaluation that needs to be done for your child, please visit us at childrensnational.org or you can also directly email us at info at Thank you again. You're welcome, Michael. Have a great day.